just to give you some context of why I'm up here, myself and some of my colleagues joined the Partners in Prevention Network last year and speaking with Sharon Simon, who was the previous coordinator about our role and what we do, she sort of didn't really understand the secondary school nurse's role and I think having the name nurse in there, sometimes people have different ideas of what our role is and so Sharon felt it would be good to some of the network members who work out in the community as to what we do, we might be able to work with you. So that is the context of why I'm here. Um, and yes, Jacinta had introduced us to the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development since the 1st of January with the new government. They've changed the name now to the Department of Education and Training. So um, DECD was the old and Department of Education and Training is the new, which was the old, old a few years ago. So it's all gone backwards. Okay. So the secondary school nursing program um, is a program that uh, is, we're employed at a regional level. So that means we're not employed by schools. We're um, come from the Department of Education and Training at a regional level and my managers sit within the regional office. That might be a little bit, um, it's different to some schools that employ a, a school nurse individually and they might have a different role to what we do. So today I'm really talking about the secondary school nursing program from a regional level. Yeah, um, We're in 200 government secondary schools and we cover all regions of Victoria. So it's about two thirds of all government schools and um, most of the nurses are placed in most disadvantaged schools in the state. Um, most schools, oh, a school would be allocated a nurse two days per week. If there is a nurse working full time, obviously she's given two schools throughout the week. Um, and we're part, we sit in part of the wellbeing team. So we work closely with in the wellbeing team um, and the leadership group and teachers as well. Just a background, all the nurses are, are in Division 1 nurses and have background in health promotion, adolescent health and wellbeing, sexual health, community health, mental health, counselling and paediatrics. So there is a big breadth of um, knowledge and experience within our team. Um, yeah, and as I said, I just wanted to differentiate between school nurses employed by schools independently. We sit in um, an office, so I, I work in the Footscray office, so the Western Metro region, and then there's Eastern, Northern, Southern, and then you have the regional offices as well. So usually all the nurses will meet once a week and we can discuss issues and programs and things that's going on. So we have a good collegiate level there. So, Program goals. Our main goal of the secondary school nursing program is to reduce risk to young people and promote better health in the wider community. Support the school community in addressing contemporary health and social issues facing young people and their families. Focus on the prevention of ill health and problem behaviours by ensuring coordination between the school and community-based health and support services so we can be that link within the school and um, most services out in the community. And we hope to play a key role in reducing negative health outcomes and risk-taking behaviours among young people. So one of our big goals is primary prevention and that can be on a number of different levels, which I'll talk about soon. But we can also provide early intervention and if there are cases where um, intervention is required, we can um, assess the young person and sort of um, refer them on to appropriate services and also assist the school with issues that may come up for them as well, which they might not necessarily know how to deal with and we can provide secondary consultations for that as well. So how do we go in about doing that? We follow the social model of health. So we try to address the social and environmental determinants um, of health plus the biological and medical side of that as well. So with regards to gender-based violence, we're looking at the whole big picture and we've certainly highlighted today the whole big picture of, of those sort of issues. We develop a health promotion plan in consultation with the school. So um, by that we meet with the leadership in the school and the key players within the school, ask them what they think are the health issues that they would like us to work on over 
a two year period within the school and they can range from safe environments to sexual health and wellbeing to mental health to um, healthy eating. So there's a wide variety of, of health priorities that we can cover and we do um, align those with the national, sto state and local health priorities as well and we gather evidence as to you know, what is going on for young people with regards to that particular issue at the national and local level and within the school. The health promotion plan can also be a catalyst for change. And so um, going on to the next point, we, we developed that health promotion plan to do a whole school health promotion approach. So yes, we will have a look at what's happening within the health curriculum and see how we can better that, see what the schools are doing well and see what we can improve that way. But also we want to look at the school's policy with whatever um, the health priorities that we're looking at and also trying to get young people involved to get community agencies to come in and assist us and, and work in partnership with the school and parent involvement as well, which is, can be a little bit difficult in the secondary school setting, but we, yeah, we, that's what we aim to do. We do want to work in collaboration with community organisations. The schools do need support um, and that's one of our aims as well. Um, and yeah, a large um, evidence-based program. So when we're going into schools, we want to try and get that gold standard approach, the programs that work, why they work, how they work. So we, we, that's what we advocate for. And a large part of our, our role is advocacy. So advocating for change within the school if it's needed, and what's best practice. Um, we want to prepare schools. You know, a lot of schools are in a different place with regards to different issues. So, um, might be just be a lot of advocacy work for a few years, letting them know about the problems, what we can do about it as well. Um, because we're sitting in the schools two days a week, we develop relationships with the leaders in the school. So sometimes, perhaps if you work for community organisations, you might find that you're ringing up the school and getting nowhere. Um, perhaps a secondary school nurse might be a good person for you to speak with. They have um, developed relationships within the school, so they know who the, the leaders are within the school and the contacts that they've made. And sometimes a lot of that advocacy work can be a lot of informal conversations over a lengthy period of time to keep people within the school. Um, and yeah, so sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get programs up and running. Um, and, with, and working with staff within schools. So parts of that health promotion plan that we develop might involve staff PDs. It might be um, uh, um, organising PD to staff uh, on an hour after school. A lot of school staff do find it difficult to leave school for a day or two and attend training and PD. So we can provide that staff um, PD after school. Um, it can also be informal conversations about issues. So with regards to gender-based violence, there might be a lot of informal staff about, do you know what's going on in this space? I went to a PD here, this is the issue here. And for some that's new, they don't know about it. So a lot of conversations can happen informally, plus formally, we can help organise outside organisations to come in as well. Um, yeah, curriculum development. So a lot of our work, we do work really closely with health staff, um, having a look at what they are teaching in the classes to young people and trying to well, we do, not try, we do develop um, health curriculum that is aligned to OSVALS, which is what the teachers need to teach, and um, it's been evidence-based and, yeah, best practice. So that's everything that we advocate for there. Um, and we support teachers in delivering this stuff. So especially around this topic, some teachers can be really uncomfortable or not have the confidence, so it's about us supporting them. We want to... Um, make the work sustainable. So if we're supporting teachers to deliver it so they can understand the concepts, they will deliver it more often, not relying on the one nurse to come into the classes and do that. Yeah. So the programs that secondary school nurses have either delivered, and this is throughout the state, or advocated for, 
um, of the CASA SAPS program and unfortunately Steph Tipping isn't here today to talk about that so that's been delivered in the class. Love Bites um, which is from New South Wales so we've had nurses deliver that in, in collaboration with um, community youth workers as well. Respectful Relationships Education in Schools project which Emily is about to discuss um, so we've got a couple of our nurses who were able to talk about that with their schools and they've come on board. Um, Be the Hero, which is another online um, program in the picture, which um, Marie Crabb is here and she developed that program. So it's about us going in and advocating for this and uh, the reasons why that's important to be taught in the schools. As I said earlier, a lot of schools can be in a different place. You might have some schools that are ready to go and understand the, the concept of um, you know, gendered violence and how, what we need to teach in the schools and they're ready to go and run with the Respectful Relationships Education in Schools project. Other schools just aren't in that place yet. So we will spend a lot more time advocating for these programs and what a lot of uh, us that we do in the respectful relationships curriculum, so that's in the, the sex ed that they deliver at seven, eight and nine, is try and move that along from the traditional STI safe sex um, curriculum that they teach and I think teachers feel safe with that. It's about introducing the other concepts, so concepts around gender, gender assumptions, how that influences young people's decision making within their relationships and we develop those by using resources like Catching On Later, the Building Respectful Relationships, Stepping Out Against Gender-Based Violence um, resources, it's all one curriculum as well. So what we develop, we, we try and source from reputable um, places. The Girls Talk, Guys Talk program, um, the Better Man program and White Ribbon Day events. So it is about trying to aim for that gold standard in um, respectful relationships and that's what we're aiming for and a whole school approach where we're looking at policy and you know cultural change within the school and um, you know involving the community and parents and a whole school approach but sometimes schools just aren't in that place so we need to start work in different areas so that's what yeah that's what we do there and just for those of you who are working in that community space and you would like to work with um, secondary school nurse, they might be able to help you get in the school system if you're having a little bit of difficulty of getting anyone to listen to you within a school and a great program that you want to run. Probably secondary school nurse would be, um, might be a good starting point for you because that's what our core business is. So there's too many people to put down as contacts so I put uh, Pip Lyons there so she's from the Department of Education and Training and she's the Nursing Services Unit Manager so she looks after a, a number of other nurses as well the Primary School Nursing Program and Maternal and Child Health um, Program as well that's her contact number and she'd be able to direct you into wherever you're working in, Austra in, in Victoria so we've got the South Western Victoria region, North Western Victoria region Northeastern or southeastern, it's metro and rural area as well. So I think that was probably the best person for you to contact. And you could say where you're located. I would like to know what schools are in my area that have a secondary school nurse in them. Can I have the, the um, contact details? So that's my presentation. Hopefully, that's given people a little bit of an insight into our role and what we do and our goals and aims. So thank you.